Good evening and welcome to the 2022 Shakopee School Board Candidates Forum, sponsored by the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Tonight we're gathered at River Valley Church. My name is Michael Clem. I'm an attorney at Home Youth and Johnson and a member of the Chamber, and I will serve as moderator tonight. All candidates for Shakopee School Board were invited to participate. With us this evening are Joe Aldrich, Chad Johnson, Brian Kane, David Melby, Christy Peterson, Zachary Pearson, Nick Stepka, and Caroline Valdez. The candidates are arranged in alphabetical order. The candidates have already recorded video interviews to introduce themselves to the community. And you can see those online, so the candidates will not make opening statements tonight. I encourage you to watch the videos on the Shakopee Chamber website. Tonight, the candidates will be asked a series of questions. They will have 60 seconds to respond to each question unless otherwise noted. The first question tonight will go to Joe Aldrich. What have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? So when my daughters were in school, I was a soccer coach eight, nine different times. I taught religion for three different years and I volunteered at Red Oak uh, one year. I was teaching third graders some fun math uh, going with my specialty. And I've also been on the school board for the last four years. Chad Johnson, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Uh, thanks. Uh, like Joe, I also did some volunteering at Red Oak Elementary. My wife was uh, on the PTO and uh, so I also did some volunteering with the PTO, putting together their school directory, volunteering with some of the school events, um, like the, um, their silent auction and stuff like that. Um, I was a uh, den leader and then Pinewood Derby race director and then um, uh, committee chair for Cub Scout Pack 619. And then most recently, I coached a uh, Lego robotics team for fifth, fifth and sixth graders. Brian Kane, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Uh, I have volunteered uh, two or three seasons uh, coaching my daughters and other um, young kids in soccer. And I've also volunteered um, for two or three years as chairperson for the church festival. And I have also um, been involved in the parish council and in my kids' education at Shakopee Area Catholic School. David Mulby, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Well, I have uh, two kids in the Shakopee school system. They're in third and fifth grades, and I volunteer at their school. I have uh, been a uh, chaperone to some of their uh, fun events. Uh, so that's as much fun for me as it is for them. And uh, I have... Uh, uh, worked in the Sunday school for the past 10 years. Uh, a lot of the people in our community go to the uh, same church and they, um, so I've helped out uh, leading and um, supervising the Sunday school program. Um, and then also uh, we, our kids, you know, are still school age, so they have a lot of friends and we uh, bring them to fun events like parks and swimming and uh, then there's the birthday parties, and so we, uh, you know, like to make a uh, positive impact on the neighborhood kids. Christy Peterson, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Well, I've been involved in the community um, since I've lived here in Shakopee since 1999. I've been past president of the Shakopee Girls Fast Pitch Softball Association. I've been a board member for the Shakopee Education Endowment Foundation, which gives grants to teachers in the classrooms. Uh, I, I was involved in the referendum for the expansion of the high school back in um, 2014, I believe it was. And obviously I've been on the school board for the past four years and I've also been involved in the Minnesota State School Board Association Board of Directors, representing many of the schools in Scott and Carver counties. But one of the things that I feel I've um, really contributed to um, impact students' lives is being in the classroom over the past four years with the minus COVID years, but reading to the kids, seeing the kids in the classroom, 
um, and speaking to kids at the high school. That's been really meaningful for me. Zachary Pearson, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Well, in the past, um, I haven't done a whole lot, to be totally honest with you. I've only been a Shakopee resident for two years. Um, other than bringing my uh, wonderful fifth grade daughter to this school district, uh, that's about the only thing I've done thus far. But my hope is to make positive change with this run for school board. Nick Stepka, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Well, I volunteer my time with my wife, uh, two different Girl Scout troops, and I also help out with my one of my other daughter's Girl Scout troops um, when it comes to mechanical stuff and and other things like that, I'm usually the one that, that they rely on to help teach the girls. Um, and I also helped with the construction of the adaptive park over by Lions Park over there. And Caroline Valdez, what have you done in the past to positively impact the students of Shakopee? Um, in the past, I have volunteered for Shakopee Area Catholic Schools when my kids went to school there. I have been a volunteer coordinator for the track and field booster club, and I have been I have volunteered for many activities and the Shakopee Girls Basketball Association, and I support local businesses. And I'm a current um, I was appointed to the school board, and I've been having a, a fun time serving. Um, so thank you. Brian Kane, you will be first for this next question. What are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? Uh, some of the greatest challenges in public education right now are um, teaching our kids uh, back to the basics um, and also um, making sure that uh, when there's referendums uh, or levies to bring to the public that there is discussion, well, a deep discussion before, so that all voters are informed. And what was the second part again? Uh, what are the greatest challenges and also the greatest opportunities? Uh, the greatest opportunities for our uh, school district are to um, enable uh, all students to be safe in the schools, to not revert back to distance learning or any masking, and to give parents a say in their education, not the school board, not the Minnesota School Board Association, or I mean not the school board, the teachers union and the Minnesota School Board Association. David Filmby, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest challenges going on now is the uh, all of the um, special interest groups that are applying a pressure onto the school system. So we have everything from national governments, state governments, um, and uh, a whole slew of other groups that are trying to help make decisions for the school system. We really need to get back to the basics where we can uh, have the parents um, collaborating with the teachers to uh, run the school system. Um, and the, uh, we need to provide for the teachers um, the tools that they need so that they can uh, teach our kids the basic stuff. And um, we have a lot of stuff like adult content that's coming into the school system. And we really need to step in and be the adults and um, make sure that our kids have great opportunities and not turn it into a Sodom and Gomorrah. Christy Peterson, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? I think one of the biggest challenges that school districts face right now are the teacher shortages. Um, this isn't just a Shakopee issue, this is a statewide issue in a national level uh, issue. If we don't have teachers in the classroom, we don't have substitute teachers that are able to step in and fill in, um, that's going to hurt the opportunities for our children and their ability to learn. And um, we all know that it's a profession that people are not going into like um, they used to. People are retiring. COVID has really um, made people retire early. Um, because of all of the challenges and, and the changes and the pivots that teachers had to do during that time. So that is a significant challenge. 
I also think that one of the challenges that we face is funding. And you've heard earlier tonight about fully funded schools and what, that, what does that really mean? Well, when states and federal governments mandate you to provide programs, they don't always provide the funding. And that's where our shortfalls are in our schools. Zachary Pearson, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? I think one of the biggest challenges that needs to be addressed and that is an ongoing challenge um, is mental health. And uh, we've seen that with um, school shootings and school violence across the country. Um, and I think at the root cause of that is mental health. Um, and I think kids are being bombarded with a lot of uh, tough issues that they may or may not be mentally equipped to handle. And I think that um, that's why we're seeing a lot of the outbursts and the violence. And uh, coupled with that, I think another challenge that we have is keeping our kids safe. Um, I think a lot of the uh, measures that have been put in place uh, in our school systems have done the opposite um, and have not kept our kids safe. And I think we need to look at what actually works. Nick Stepka, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? Well, I would say in Shakopee, probably one of the challenges, and I just saw this today on social media again, um, is bullying. There's, there's bullying on buses currently, um, and there's not, a much, there's not much being done about it. Um, another challenge for the Shakopee Public Schools is the public trust in their finances. Um, I know I was an, an opponent to it, uh, t to the levy, um, and I, I just think that they need to be extremely transparent, not just high-level overview. Um, opportunities, I would say increased test scores is a huge opportunity for us and also a more unified student body. Caroline Valdez, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? Well, I have to agree with Christy that staff shortage um, has been an issue. We need to find very talented people. To, we need to attract talented people here in Shakopee, make Shakopee the school of choice. I would also have to say that student learning, learning performance, not everybody learns this, the same way and we need to find you know what works for the students the best stu the um, think about the students best interest um, I think um, areas of opportunities you know um, is you know inclusion diversity and inclusion so I think that we need to make sure we empower our students make them feel that they belong and support it Joe Aldrich, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? A lot of the good points have already been brought up. Uh, a lack of teachers, a lack of paras, uh, a lack of school bus drivers to get the kids to school in the first place. Um, bullying is an issue, but the opportunities are endless that, that we, can, we can do in the school. Education is the great equalizer, and if the students put in their head that they can do anything, the Shakopee School District has made advancements so that these kids can succeed and the opportunities that these kids for their future and right now are, are endless. The, the, the classes that we have right now at the high schools, some of the, uh, um, I, I've looked at the curriculum, it's, it's unbelievable the, the class you can take in, in finance and health, just with the, uh, uh, the advancement of these classes are just, the, the kids have such great opportunities. Thank you. Chad Johnson, what are the greatest challenges and opportunities in public education? Uh, so certainly COVID was a huge challenge. Um, uh, none of us liked it, it was tough to get through. Uh, it was really disappointing to see an element of our community use COVID to oppose the levy. Um, and if their demands weren't met, they weren't gonna support the levy. Um, <clears throat> some of the other uh, candidates brought up uh, things like special interests, um, I do, I do see some different special interests that want uh, distinct, minute control over the content that can be included in classrooms and what facts can and cannot be talked about. Um, I think that's troubling. Um, some of the opportunities that we have. Um, so um, Mr. Sepka mentioned uh, transparency and public trust. That's, uh, that's huge for me. Uh, I think that's been a longstanding issue. Uh, there's more that we can do in that area to um, uh, to kind of not just dump the, the financial books on people and say, well, it's public, 
um, but to simplify it, make it easier to understand and make sure everyone has it available. Christy Peterson, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Well, I've been on the school board for the past four years, and I will tell you that I have poured my heart into everything um, related to our kids and their future over the past four years. Being on the school board is not an easy job, and I would have to um, think that um, Caroline and Joe would have to agree, as well as other board members, that the past four years have been very difficult to be a school board member because of COVID. Um, and so we've had a lot of challenges and a lot of things that, that we've had to face, but I feel that I've had a lot of leadership skills and other experiences that I've been able to bring to the table and help lead our district through that. Um, and in addition to that, being involved in the State School Board Association as a board of director, um, just advocating for our kids, not only just in Shakopee, but in the entire state of Minnesota. Um, our kids deserve it, and that's our future. And our future economy depends on education that our students receive today and in the future. Zachary Pearson, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Um, I have uh, held positions in past employment and leadership and management. Um, I also served on my former HOA board as vice president for uh, two and a half years. Um, I managed budget and uh, various other aspects of the HOA board, um, along with the president of the board at the time. Um, other than that, I'm a dad of uh, three girls, and uh, one of them is in Shakopee schools, and uh, the next two will be on their way uh, very soon. And so um, I'm a dad, I'm concerned for my kids, and I believe that I share a lot of the same concerns that other parents have, and uh, uh, that's why I'm running. Nick Stepka, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Well, in, in previous jobs, like other people on this, on, uh, up here, um, I've, I've worked in management on many different levels, whether it's uh, automotive service centers or uh, automotive parts stores. Um, currently, I do research and development, so I constantly trying to find improvement for things and constantly testing things to the limits. Um, and I'm also not afraid to ask why. Um, whenever people come to places of business with business proposals and you know bids and stuff like that, a lot of times people just kind of look over it and gloss over it and approve it. I'm not afraid to ask why, figure out what the warranties are and, and all those other small details that everyone just looks over. Caroline Valdez, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Well, I feel my background um, in recruiting would help me um, with the school board. I mean, I understand the um, staffing issues that are going on. And I have been a director of career services and I've helped students with mock interviews, resume building, and I've placed students in jobs, you know, I've gone out to companies and advocated for to hire our student, my the students, um, at a for-profit college that I worked for. So, I mean, I have that background in higher education, and I feel my experience in HR would help our students. I have a passion for helping. Joe Aldrich, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? I'm currently the chief financial officer of an insurance brokerage, and I have been working on budgets for more than 25 years. Um, I have been the treasurer of the Shakti School Board for the last four years, and I have made suggestions to the finance director on what kind of reporting would be the best for the school board to see so that we know exactly what's going on. They have, they've, they've listened to me. We, we get great reports every month on, on just revenue versus expenditure so that we know that the mistakes that happened six, seven years ago won't happen again. And I will continue using my, my knowledge of budgets uh, after I am reelected for the next four years. Chad Johnson, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Uh, thanks. So I've had a, a, about a 20 year career in information technology, starting with uh, fixing hardware um, and moving on to just fixing greater and greater problems and on to fixing complex problems with large-scale enterprise software. Um, <clears throat> so problem solving in general. Um, later in my career, I went into um, project management, 
So as a project manager, you have to get people to do things that you want to do, you want them to do, even though you're not their boss. So that's uh, can be tough to navigate, and it's uh, um, an interesting skill set that I'm still building. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, more recently in my career, I've moved to program level management. So I have multiple projects in my portfolio. Um, last year it was uh, twelve million dollars. So not on the level of the school board's budget, but still big budgets. So problem solving, working with working well with people, and managing budgets. Brian Kane, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Uh, for 20 years prior, I uh, was uh, in management in a nursing home, so I got to know uh, the uh, budgetary difficulties that family have and uh, managing other employees. And then towards the uh, last few years, I've been in management and retail, so I've learned how to um, critically think and treat uh, other coworkers and the younger kids and teenagers that work with me with um, uh, critical thinking skills on an individual le level instead of um, um, giving into like the corporate type group think. And um, I have four, four daughters and I have two that are in the high school right now and that's uh, part of why I want to run. David Nolby, what skills and experience would you bring to the school board? Um, well, uh, besides uh, working with my own kids and kids in the community, um, I have a uh, uh, BA in journalism and a master's in business. And I've worked for 10 years as a uh, data and business analyst. So I know about the processes, looking at the processes and how to um, streamline them. And uh, I've uh, worked a lot with uh, HR data, so as an HR analyst and HR forecasting. And um, I'm uh, someone that's uh, respectful. I uh, get along with most people, but at the same time, I'm not afraid to question what's going on. And a few years back when we had a lot of problems, um, if people would have questioned what was going on, uh, maybe we wouldn't have, uh, had all the problems we did. Um, so uh, I uh, am, uh, overall, uh, I think I'm a great candidate for the school board. Nick Stepka, what is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? I think the most important issue facing the school district right now is the, is the declining test scores. Um, I think a lot of it, it, it well, I, when I was, today when I was looking at just, like, I was looking at a couple of things as a quick refresher, and I noticed that the test scores in Shakopee do really well in elementary. And then once we go to middle school, they drop significantly, and they rebound a little bit more in high school. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but I would definitely like to work with the teachers and the staff in the middle schools to figure out what kind of challenges that these kids are facing during that transition from elementary to middle school and see how we can make it better. Caroline Valdez, what is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? Well, I think the number one issue I feel is mental health. I mean, COVID has done a number of things to people and not just students, but teachers as well. And I just want to make sure that they have all the resources they need and everything's available for them. But I think we need to continue to focus on that. Joe Aldrich, what is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? I think the most important issue is getting kids caught back up after uh, having hybrid learning for the last two years. It's it's not just the shock the issue it's a issue in the entire nation and and i think it i think what we need is to take high school seniors and juniors and have them become mentors to younger kids to just try to get the the children who did not do very well during hybrid and distant to be able to get caught up uh the faster we can get the kids caught back up to where they need to be the better um our schools will be 
Chad Johnson, what is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? Uh, yeah, common answer, uh, catching up from COVID. Um, I, I do think um, there's, I'm confident that if we keep doing what we're doing, our schools do well, we will catch up, but we still need to give a push. Um, so <clears throat> um, I'm not an educator. I can't say do exactly this, that will make the test scores go up. Um, what I can do and what I'm good at is uh, finding experts, listening to their expertise um, and building a group consensus. What's the best way to go forward to solve this? Brian Kane, what do you believe is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? I would have to say also too, as a result of COVID, uh, more support for our, not only our students, but for our teachers also in the stressful, uh, or stressful time the last two years gave them, and also a better um, grasp of uh, transparency um, when um, new referendums or levies come forward. So that, uh, not, not saying to open up all the books, but to make uh, the general public more aware of what the actual issues are, instead of uh, being, um, uh, being told, or being, hearing it from other residents or hearsay so that uh, more transparency in that would be better. And um, also to touch on the mental health too, uh, our kids have been affected. I have two daughters that, my two oldest, one's a senior, one's a freshman, and um, uh, I can see that they've had a very difficult time the last two years, but they're coming out of it. My two youngest are homeschooled because of lack of uh, a job for my wife at the time, and they've struggled a little bit more but it's mostly for support for the kids and first and then the teachers too, because they went through a lot of stress. David Melby, what is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? Well, I think one of the biggest things is the uh, lack of um, parents uh, being able to get involved. Um, it used to be school systems where uh, about parents and teachers working together to run a school system. And the school board was there to help administer that. And now it seems like um, with all these special interest groups that parents are kind of pushed aside and oftentimes they're not even listened to. Um, so I think we need more of that parent-teacher collaboration. And then also community members should uh, you know, be able to get their voices heard too without fear of reprisal. And um, so, uh, you know, if I, the uh, people have good ways of like, getting their ideas out there, such as uh, blogs or having a, a good email that they can write to where someone's gonna answer it and stuff like that, I think is really important uh, moving forward. Christy Peterson, what is the most important issue facing the school district right now, and what would you do about it? I share some of the same sentiments as, as some of the other candidates up here. It's catching up with COVID, um, and there's a lot that goes with catching up with COVID. Um, you know, Shakopee schools cut seven and a half million dollars out of our budget during COVID. And that was a time where we really needed to add resources to help our students, to keep them on track, and Shakopee was unique in that situation. We were not able to do that because we were trying to balance the budget and we were cutting teachers and we were increasing class sizes. So when you do that, there is a major impact on learning. So now that we have an operating levy that's in place, we can focus on getting our kids back up to speed. We need to continue the, um, some of the programs with the credit recovery as well as some of the support, the MTSS, which is a multiple tier support system for our students and also mental health. And mental health, not just of our students, but we also have to remember the mental health of our teachers as well. That's equally as important. Zachary Pearson, what is the most important issue facing the school district and what would you do about it? Uh, I have to agree with several points, uh, mental health being one of those that I t kind of touched on earlier. Um, obviously, coming out of COVID is a challenging uh, situation that we have to navigate as well. Um, I think for Shakopee Public Schools, one of the biggest challenges um, is regaining public trust and transparency. 
I think this community was bruised by the former superintendent and the mismanagement of funds. And while the school board and the school district have done a good job uh, trending in the right direction, I still think that there's work to be done there. And I still think that we have a serious issue uh, with public trust and people not trusting the school board to operate uh, in full transparency of what's going on with the budget. Chad Johnson, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that should be eliminated or reduced? Programs that should be eliminated or reduced. Um, I, I guess I don't see any. I feel like we have uh, a really rich curriculum that covers uh, not only the basics, you know, the, the phrase back to basics was brought up. I would argue that we've never gotten away from the basics. Uh, we've added to and improved them. Um, um, I, I'm sixth, seventh grade year old me would have been thrilled at the opportunities that my son has in school, like engineering, robotics, coding. That stuff is amazing to me. So it's honestly, no, nothing jumps out as like desperately needing to be cut. Brian Kane, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you believe should be eliminated or reduced? Uh, the one major area that I think should uh, possibly be eliminated or reduced, but I would say more on the eliminated side, would be the diversity, equity, and inclusion department and the way that uh, um, ideology has sunk into our teachers' classrooms towards our students. We are the parents. We are the ones that are to raise our children. We don't need to have a department teaching our children what's right or what's wrong or what they should do and how they should treat others according to their race, their ethnicity, or their sexual preference. I think that all of that stuff does is divide, which is not beneficial to the unity of our teachers our other staff, our students, and for all the residents of the school district. David Milby, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be eliminated or reduced? Well, uh, I'm not sure if we need artificial turf on our uh, football field. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I, I think that there's overall, there's a lot of areas that I think that we could improve on and some of those might be to eliminate some things, but we need really community involvement. And if we have input from the community more and, uh, and parents that we, um, you know, will be better able to, uh, you know, know how to streamline things. Because right now we have limited resources, but all I hear more is we need more money. We need more of this. We need more of that. And, We've only got so much of that, so we need to find ways to streamline and uh, find areas that we can uh, cut back. Christy Peterson, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be eliminated or reduced? We just went through and cut seven and a half million dollars worth of budget cuts. <clears throat> and with the levy passing, yes, we did bring back some of those cuts but we permanently cut $4 million out of our expenses, permanent cuts. And that was all across the board. Programs that we are not involved with anymore or we don't have interest or we don't need, we needed to change something. It was um, support positions, superintendent's office, for example, had elimination of positions and restructuring. Um, you know, I, I want to go back to um, a comment that was just made in regards to funding. When we say that we need more money, as I said earlier, school districts need to be fully funded. And what that means is when the state says you have to provide a program, you have to provide it. And if they don't provide the funding, you still have to provide it. And that takes away out of the operating funds for other kids in our district. Zachary Pearson, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be eliminated or reduced? Well, I obviously don't have a list of uh, programs in front of me, so I guess I can't speak directly to items that should or shouldn't be cut. 
Um, I'd be willing to bet that there are probably some uh, items that could go and could be adjusted and spending could be tailored here and there. Um, at any rate, I believe that the district uh, can do a better job of working within the budget and being uh, better stewards of the community's money. Um, obviously, the levy already passed, but it passed at a time when uh, the community, as well as the entire nation, is hurting financially. Um, and I think it, the timing is poor, and I think we can do a better job. Um, one area where I do think we could look at uh, potentially cutting back is some of the salaries. Um, I think that there are some people in high positions that are getting an astronomical amount of money, and I'd question whether or not that's necessary. Nick Stepka, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be eliminated or reduced? Well, a lot of the points that I wanted to make have already been said, but I, I will definitely say that I don't, like just like, my, just like Zach just said, I, I don't have a list in front of me of all the um, organizations or all the, where all the money is going. The only thing you can really find online is a really high level overview. Um, but I do think that there is spending that, that could be reduced um, or programs that could be eliminated if they're no longer needed. Um, I understand that we have done a great job at that, but I think we can do a better job at it. Caroline Valdez, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be eliminated or reduced? No, um, Christy said best, we've already done some budget cuts and we cannot cut anything else. I mean, that's not gonna affect our students. So no, there's no budget cuts that could be made. And Joe Aldrich, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be eliminated or reduced? I don't believe so. I think we can be, we can look at efficiencies. We can try to, if, if, if needed, efficiency is everything. I'm gonna go back with what Christy said earlier about the federal and state mandates. We have $8 million in unfunded mandates that basically comes out of our general fund. If, if the government had fully funded that $8 million, we would not probably have had to raise uh, the levy as high as we did, and we would be able to pay teachers more. We were at the lowest, pretty much the lowest of the 13 competitive uh, school districts, and with the levy passing, especially uh, question two, we were able to get those teachers up to the midpoint, and that's a great start, but our teachers sh deserve to be paid well. So to, to say that anything should be cut, no unless we can make things more efficient and, and actually provide more into the classroom. For this next question, David Melby, uh, you will go first. Are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that should be added or expanded? Um, well, I would say uh, definitely we need to expand the accessibility for uh, the community to look at every, uh, all the processes that are being used in the school system. And then also, uh, you know, the budget, uh, we should have uh, detailed access to the budget. Now we don't wanna, you know, give away uh, people's personal salary, like teachers' personal salary or age or whatever. So not personal information. Um, but as a data analyst, I know that unless if you can look through everything and give it to everybody, we have all kinds of people in the community that have all kinds of ideas. So if we let the community in to see what's going on, they're gonna have all kinds of ideas for us. So I think that's the one thing we need to expand is just the accessibility to, to look at the processes and uh, budgets, detailed budgets. Christy Peterson, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be added or expanded? Well, as part of the operating levy, we asked for additional dollars specifically to add activities for our students. And uh, with our activity director, there was a group of community members that came together and, and did an analysis of activities and opportunities in other districts and how Shakopee compared. And we were significantly behind some of these offerings for our students. And when we have an activity or an educational opportunity for every student, they feel like they belong and they build confidence. So anytime that we can add programs or activities to expand their, um, to spread their wings and to grow, um, whether it's in the classroom or outside of it in a club activity, 
Um, we need to do that. I think one area where there's an opportunity for expansion is our fine arts programs. Um, the addition of plays in both the middle and the high school um, is really important so all kids have an opportunity to participate. Right now, um, it, especially at the middle school level, we don't have that opportunity and kids um, are being cut from being in plays because of the lack of, of programming that we have in that area. Zachary Pearson, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be added or expanded? Um, well, I think we need to get middle school sports uh, back up in full swing. Um, I think that's, I, I don't know exactly when that was cut, but I think that's uh, a priority that needs to be addressed. Um, in addition to that, I think the focus should be on, you know, as, as has been mentioned here, you know, more of, I guess, just focusing on basic education and preparing students to enter the real world, preparing students to enter the workforce. Um, programs that focus on helping students decide what they want to do with their life once they exit the educational system. Um, career trials, things like that, I think that needs to be uh, a focus uh, that I don't think is heavily emphasized at this point. Nick Stepka, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that should be added or expanded? Well, um, a few others have mentioned about different clubs and stuff that, that came into this door that we that that they want to introduce into the school. There was one I, I was thinking. I was thinking about introducing that was a fishing club, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't didn't we just add something like that recently? Yes, we do have a fishing Perfect. club. Perfect. Yeah, that was one of the things I was talking to my daughter the other, the other weekend about. Um, but getting the students involved in some sort of club is going to help develop unity within the student body, and also within the community. It'll get the students out and their parents out to get more people talking to each other. Um, some of these people up here I have never seen before. Um, but it'll get people talking to each other and getting to know each other and it'll get them off of screens, which actually hurts communication. Caroline Valdez, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be added or expanded? So I'm going to echo what Nick said and Christy said about activities. I think activities is a very important for our students to make them feel they belong and empower them with new opportunities. And I want to also expand on, you know, my HR recruiting experience. I think we need to partner with communities. Um, and businesses to help our students, you know, find jo job opportunities, whether that's internships. You know, I love the, um, the academy model that Shakopee has, and I just want that to continue to grow. Joe Aldrich, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be added or expanded? This was mentioned earlier before in this debate, but I think that uh, having more uh, counselors dealing with mental health of the students is very important as there's just a lot out there. Uh, bullying on social media is, I'm, I'm glad I graduated from high school 30 some years ago because the, the bullying on social media, uh, what I've read and what I've seen is, is overwhelming for these kids. And I think that their mental health is uh, taking a hit. Um, and, and activities, you know, having a student in, in activities, it gets them more involved. Uh, the more you get involved with activities, the better you're going to do in school. It's, it's been proven uh, time after time that the more that a child is involved, the better they will do in school. So it, it's, uh, we, we've had a list at the, in the last couple of school board meetings of all the activities that are out there, and we just need uh, students to participate. Uh, but, they're, but they're great, and hopefully we can even have more. Chad Johnson, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be added or expanded? Sure. So one that's personal to me is a uh, high potential program for elementary school level. Uh, we have that in place for um, kids from uh, backgrounds that are underrepresented in high potential programs. Uh, I would like to see that expand to all kids uh, in, at the elementary level. Um, but that's uh, very personal to me because uh, my son could use that. Um, another thing that the budget could use is uh, a publicist. Um, we're all used to uh, easily digestible tidbits of information coming at us constantly, um, and the budget is not that. 
um, maybe we could make it more like that uh, to, uh, you know, in the spirit of transparency. Um, <clears throat> and lastly, uh, you know, um, there was a lot of talk about activities. Um, I will just say my experience with Lego League is uh, if you want more activities, <laughs> you should be prepared to coach them. <laughs> um, but uh, our community ed program uh, is really awesome. Uh, so, yeah, that's all. And Brian Kane, are there any programs or areas of the school district budget that you feel should be added or expanded? Well, the areas that I think should be expanded is the great work that our academies are doing. And I would have to also agree uh, counseling services for those kids that are being not so much bullied but are having a hard time coming out of post-COVID and their um, counselors need to have a little bit, not so much expanded, but added uh, monetary help into that area. And I would also like to also agree with others here too that increasing um, the uh, funds for um, middle school sports and STEM learning and engineering projects like Lego and things like that. And also to um, build up our student self-esteem through teaching them how to critically think for themselves as individuals instead of being stuck in with the group and group think. Um, and uh, that's where bullying and disunity and hurt help, or starts with the group of kids. Uh, in the interest of time, let's make this next question a 30-second response. Uh, Zachary Pearson, you will be first. How should the school district ensure the safety of students? Well, I believe that we need to start by um, looking at common sense measures. Uh, I've seen a lot of things online like uh, unique door locks and things like that um, where it's impossible for somebody to gain access to a room uh, in the event of uh, you know, a crisis. Um, things like that that are, are easily installed and don't add a bunch of expense to the budget would be a good place to start. But ultimately, I believe um, that somebody who wants to do harm is deterred by a good guy with a gun in school. Um, and I believe that's what we need to look at. Nick Stepka, how should the school district ensure the safety of students? Um, well, my, uh, Zach here said, said a lot of things I wanted to say. Um, but I, I, I do agree with the fact of that we're gonna, that we would need more public resource officers inside the schools um, and, and also better ways to secure the doors with checks and balances in place to, you know, like if a door was locked, we need a, a visual or we need an, uh, an alert to the office that, hey, this door was locked by this person. Caroline Valdez, how should the school district ensure the safety of students? We just need to continue to work with our local law enforcement and make sure that we have um, security and um, our, our emergency response plan is in, intact. Joe Aldrich, how should the school district ensure the safety of students? So at our most recent school board meeting on Monday, we actually uh, passed or we approved the uh, agreement to have more resource officers in the school. It's, it's great. One of our uh, uh, student school board members told us about how much they just like to have, you know, they, they trust these officers in the school. And by trusting these officers that are already in the school, that, that gets us uh, a long way into ensuring the safety. Chad Johnson, how should the school district ensure the safety of students? So building safety has already been talked about as far as physical security. Um, mental health has been brought up many times tonight. Uh, one thing I can add to this conversation is I think, um, I think in a way that diversity and inclusion is a safety measure uh, in the sense that it builds a sense of community among the students. Um, I think it is okay and good to teach kids to respect people from different backgrounds who they might, they might not encounter outside of their school life. Um, so that's one aspect. Brian Kane. What do you believe uh, should be done to ensure the safety of students? Uh, again, I would agree with Betty here to increase the amount of uh, uh, police that are the police officers that are there. Not so much to be hung up on locking down the schools and things like that. I would also go as far as to say to possibly have uh, teachers or even staff members that have the, the right to conceal and carry to uh, wear uh, a firearm within the school district 
because if somebody is dressed as an officer and somebody wants to do harm to the students and teachers in the school, the first person they're going to point out and is the person that's in uniform. David Milby, how should the school district ensure the safety of students? Well, I think it really starts at teaching our kids at a young age. Uh, we want to uh, be able to nurture them and let kids be kids um, so they're not dealing with adult issues uh, until they're adults. And then uh, we want to have uh, unity and respect, um, as my kids would tell me. And um, we uh, also want to have uh, respect and uh, diversity of ideas. So. Uh, my ideas shouldn't be um, looked at as a hateful thing, but you should respect my ideas and be able to talk about them. Christy Peterson, how should the school district ensure the safety of students? A lot of what I was gonna say has already been said with school resource officers. Um, I think it's important to know that our school resource officers um, establish relationships with students, which gives them a sense of, of security and safety in our schools. But I am not in favor of having guns in the classroom and, and put that responsibility on our teachers. Um, that's, that's just, that's not their job. Their job is to educate our students. Um, their job is not to learn how to shoot a gun. And for our final question tonight, uh, Caroline Valdez, you'll be first. Are there any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? Can you repeat, sorry, can you repeat that again? Are there any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? You know, I don't think there's any changes that need to be made um, to the curriculum. Joe Aldrich, do you see any changes that are needed to the curriculum for the public schools? I think that the, uh, I think it's, I think the classes right now that the students have are really good. They have uh, expanded, uh, especially through the academies, what the, what the kids can learn and I think the classes are great. Chad Johnson, are any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned elementary level high potential. I, I think that's relatively minor and it's a special interest to me. Um, there's been some mention in the campaign and, and tonight of um, back to basics. I would encourage people to think about what that really means. Um, what are the basics? When did we get away from them? Um, because I think we're solidly on them. Uh, and more, um, you know, we probably the, the, the basics uh, plus more enrichment beyond that. Brian Kane, do you believe that any changes are needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? Yes, and like I had mentioned uh, already earlier is the, the particular area and department of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, and I don't say that just to get rid of it or anything, but not to have the uh, teachers uh, pushing it in classes, just about every class that kids are going to, they have something to have to do with inclusion, diversity, and that's not to knock people who want it, but a primary um, person that brings up our children are the parents, not the students, not the, or not the teachers and not the school board, or the school district and the administration. It starts in the home. David Bilby, are any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? Uh, well, I would uh, argue uh, about bringing back the old math. <laughs> and my kids bring home their math, and I have no idea what they're doing. It takes me a while to learn it. So uh, maybe it's doing some good, but um, it's, uh, I think it's a, a more difficult way to learn. But some of it's probably good. Um, and. Uh, I just think that, that ongoing, uh, we need to make changes. Keep making changes. Uh, be honest about what we're doing good and about what we need to uh, change or uh, redo. So we always need to be continually looking at um, what we can do to um, improve. Christy Peterson, are any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? I think we have a very robust curriculum in Shakopee with many opportunities for our students. Uh, one of the things you have to remember with the curriculum is that the state does, the Department of Education does drive some of that curriculum from a base level and school districts then can build upon that um, with additional classes and opportunities for students. For example, financial literacy. 
financial literacy is something that's been brought forward at the state capitol to be part of a required class to graduate from high school. We have that in Shakopee. That's not a requirement at the state, but that's something that we have in our curriculum that we require our students to graduate. So I think we have a really robust curriculum. Um, I think that we're very fortunate in Shakopee to have the community partners that we have so that our students can go out and explore careers and have opportunities um, right in the workplace and um, to gain that career experience and something that they might um, desire to go on and, and have a career in in the future. Zachary Pearson, are any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? Yeah, I'd like to kind of address a little bit uh, Chad's question about when we got away from the basics. And I, I don't think that we've gotten away from the basics, but I think we've added a lot of things to the basics that don't need to be there. Uh, namely, critical race theory, which is in the curriculum. And I understand uh, Christy's point that it's uh, some of the stuff is state mandated, but to the extent that we have the ability to deviate from those things, that's what we need to do. Uh, we need to get back to focusing on the fact that we're all human beings. And instead of looking at all the ways that we're different and emphasizing uh, everything by skin color and race and ethnicity and religion, um, let's focus on the fact that we're all students here in Shakopee and that we're all part of community and let's teach these kids how to think and not what to think. Nick Stepka, are any changes needed to the curriculum for Shakopee Public Schools? There's only so much that, that the Shakopee Public School can do at a school level. Like, like it was mentioned before, a lot of it is done at the state level. Um, but I, I do believe that we need to <coughs> scale back wherever we can on some of the hot button topics like the CRT and the over the over sexualization of books that are being offered in, the, in uh, libraries. Um, and I, I would have to also say that a few more high potential teachers would be a very good thing. Our time is running out. Anyone whose questions have not been answered should contact the candidates um, or their campaign offices. You can find more information about the candidates at the Chamber's website, shakopee.org. Each candidate will now have one minute for the closing statement. The order of closing statements was selected by drawing. First will be Caroline Valdez. <laughs> Thank you to the Ch Ch Chamber of Commerce and everyone in the audience. Um, I just wanted to say that I want to continue the momentum that I've that I've started, and I promise to be an active listener, open-minded, and be the voice of the community. And I will put our students and our teachers first. I feel that my background in HR recruiting would add value to the school board, and you know I just enjoy helping students succeed, and I. Hope to have your vote in November 8th. Thank you. Brian King. Uh, to the Shakopee Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank you for holding this forum. And I really appreciated the opportunity to speak here tonight to the citizens of School District 720. I would also like to thank all of the other candidates here tonight. To close, I would like to share that in American law, all authority must originate somewhere. The people's natural rights come from God. The people of Minnesota created government in the schools via the Constitution, granting authority to teachers to conduct the people's business in educating our children. The problem is there is no constitutional authority for teachers to teach identity and ideology. Show me where it is. If you cannot find the authority in law, it does not exist. Christy Peterson. Over the last four years, I've invested a lot of time into becoming a strong and effective school board member, and I would look forward to continuing that. Um, everything that I've learned over the past four years and applying that to uh, the positive momentum that we have in our school district. But I would ask all of our, um, our audience tonight, as well as people at home, a question. Do you want a school district with significant positive momentum that will prepare our students to be successful into the future? Or do you want a school district that will revert back to the 1970s, to the back to the basics notion of education? I'll leave that decision up to you. But if you want 
a school district that provides opportunities for our students to grow into the future and to be su successful into the future, I would ask for your vote on November 8th. Chad Johnson. Uh, again, thanks to, to the chamber. Hope you guys all get to sleep in tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about earlier, public trust was shattered by our former superintendent. Um, that superintendent is long gone. That, that entire school board is gone. Um, if I could ask everyone to remember that it's the school board that we have now that got us out of that mess. Um, I'd love it if you would elect me to join them. So uh, Mr. Aldrich, Ms. Ms. Peterson, uh, Ms. Valdez. Um, <clears throat> so I'm glad that we have enough trust restored that we were able to pass the levy. Um, we, we've gotten ourselves to uh, the level of funding needed to give our students the education and enrichment that they deserve, the same as surrounding communities have. I feel like the school board's job now is to um, honor that public's trust and be the best stewards of that funding that we can be, get the most value out of that money that we can. Um, so um, strong, Shakopee schools are strongly positioned for success. Um, the reason why I'm running is to protect that future. Joe Aldrich. Thank you to the chamber for uh, giving us the last uh, hour past some of our bedtimes. Um, March 14th, 2017, we found out about a five and a half million dollar budget deficit. And on that day, I decided I was probably gonna run in 2018 for the, for the school board. Uh, the district was in turmoil. Um, in the last four years, which have been the longest four years and really the best four years, um, even though sometimes it's felt like eight, felt like 12. Um, we have, we've, we've passed the levy. Um, we, we cut $4 million permanently from the budget. Um, and we have positive momentum that I wanna be a part of going forward into the future. I hope that you've seen my, um, what I've brought to the board for the last four years and I hope that you will Give me your vote um, between now and November 8th. Thank you. Have a good night. Nick Stefka. Um, well, I, I'm, hold on. Cut, you kind of caught me off guard. Um, I, uh, I look forward to, well, first I want to thank the, the school or the, the chamber and the fellow candidates up here. Um, I look forward to getting your nomination and listening to the parents of the community to see what, what's needed for, for their kids. I wanna work as a team with the school board when I get nominated and also with the, with the community. Um, I'm transparent, I'm really good at problem solving and I would not have another First Amendment lawsuit on the school. David Melby. Well, thank you uh, Shakopee Chamber of Commerce for putting on the event. Um, it's been uh, a long night for you guys. And like one person said, I hope you get a good night's sleep. Um, and I also want to thank the uh, school board members up here who uh, have been working tirelessly for the last uh, four years. Um, if I'm elected, uh, I can promise that I will uh, work for the community and for the parents. And um, that I will work to uh, cut out uh, any of the financial uh, burdens that's uh, placed on the community. And I think that we should um, be able to have high standards, not just to be like everybody else, like every other community, but when it comes to financial stability, I think that we should um, have a higher standard than we do now. And it's, the answer shouldn't always be more money, more resources. And I understand that uh, people get in tight spots, but um, if you elect me, uh, I promise that I will work for the community and for the parents. And Zachary Pearson. Well, thank you, um, as everyone else has uh, mentioned to the Shakopee uh, Chamber for um, orchestrating this event. Thank you to everybody in the audience for being here and for all of you who are watching this either live or at home. Um, thank you to the candidates for also being here and, and uh, participating. Um, I guess 
what I would like to pose to you is if you agree with the direction that the Shakopee Public School District has been going for the last several years, then you have a clear choice for the three candidates that are up here who have been a part of that. Um, however, if you believe that we need a change in direction and that it's time for a change uh, in the way things are, are being run and you wanna get back to basics um, and teaching kids the fundamentals that they need to get back into the real world, uh, once they leave the educational system, you have other choices. Uh, regardless of your feeling or your opinion, um, I encourage everybody to vote on November 8th. Thank you. As we close this candidate forum, please remember that the views expressed in tonight's debate are those of the candidates and not those of the Chamber and Visitors Bureau. The Chamber sponsors this event as a service to the community and has gone to extraordinary lengths to ensure the objectivity of this forum. The Chamber does not endorse any candidate. Instead, we seek to provide the voters of Shakopee with the information that you need to make informed choices when you vote. Thank you to the audience this evening and to River Valley Church for hosting our event. On behalf of the Shakopee Chamber and Visitors Bureau, thank you to all the candidates. We appreciate your time and your service to the community. Election day is Tuesday, November 8th. Please remember to vote. Thank you and good night. Thank you.